Hey. Hello. <sighs> Let's see if you guys can hear me and see if everything is cool. Can you guys hear me? on yet I thought I would say hi and see how everybody's doing hello oh, so welcome everybody first of all we don't have very many people here tonight um figured that my my alcohol inks are not as popular as my poor painting and that's okay I kind of just made the decision I don't know it must have been this is earlier this year I just thought you know what Heather follow your heart go where your art is leading you regardless and people will either come or they won't but I still have to do this for me so um yeah, so this is, look at this beautiful, how could you not love this? This is what we made last week. This is the finished product with all of the embellishments and everything. Isn't that pretty? And hi, Pat, Cynthia and Peppermint Paints and Model Art 62. And of course, my moderators, Vandana and Cheryl. And we got Laura Berger. Hello, Tammy. Thank you so much for your support. And hello from Wyoming, Coral. You know, I grew up in Wyoming, so you know, I have a special place in my heart for Wyoming. Um, Elizabeth, hello, Selena. It's so nice to see you here. I think this is so gorgeous and this is Nara paper N-A-R-A by the way and um, I just love this it's a little I think a 10 inch round but I just love the way this looks I think you could hang it this way I think you could hang it this way or fully this way no matter what I just really liked the way it looks I just think it's so pretty um anyway so that was what we did last time, I wanted to make sure, even though it's been a couple weeks, I wanted to make sure. Hi, Anne. The next thing I did this week was this. And look at this. These are what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to try to do, these are my little ghost flowers. Aren't they pretty? Hi, Teresa. So I won't be able to do all the embellishments necessarily on this video unless we're here for like forever. Hi, Carrie. Nice to see you here. Thank you so much, guys. Um, because the reason why I can show I'm going to show you the basics and um, do a, maybe a little bit of embellishing. But the truth of the matter is these take a long time. Um, I probably I spent a few hours on all of the little intricate details in here. Um, just slowly outlining things and then I really like the way like this one ended up kind of looking like a blackberry sitting there on the top of that flower. I really like that. Hi Sharon. Aren't they dainty? 
Yeah, it's windy in my city off and on, and we've been having some issues with our internet, but I'm going to stay on as long as possible. So one thing I do want to do is tell you guys, um, I am having a giveaway, and I'm going to give away, for those of you that don't know, I don't even have anything to show you, this is crazy actually, I just put out Alcohol Inc. classes, a whole group of, um, a two, of classes, it's all in one chunk, and it's called um, in, um, A Study in Slate and Valencia. And and for those of you who've been following me, you know I did a ton of those Slate and Valencia um, Wow, I don't have one. They all sold. I literally don't have one to show you. Every single one of those paintings sold. Um, hi, Brenda and Shelly. So nice to have you here in Amy's Creative Acrylics. Hi, Christina Welsh is in the house. And Sharon, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, but you guys, I just put out my first set of online tutorials. It may not seem like a big deal, I was so nervous. I was like shaking <laughs> before you can ask Cheryl. I was just, I was shaking before I put them out yesterday. I don't know, you know, the idea that someone's actually paying for something. I just have such high expectations of myself. So really, really hope to exceed people's expectations. It's only $69, you guys. And you get like, there's like 12 videos in there, but you get six painting videos. Uh, five painting videos, three bonus videos, and then a, some other little videos, um, and a bunch of information. And, you know, it's up to the quality of Heather Mater Art, the way I do my videos, the editing, the sound, and you know, all of the different camera angles and everything. So it's really a big deal to me, and I appreciate each and every one of you who's supported me so far. It's really meant, it really has meant a lot to me, so I appreciate that. So, other than that, oh, I do have, I don't know if I showed this last, no, I, I couldn't have shown this last week. You'll just have to forgive me if I already showed this. I don't think I did, but here's the other thing I had been working on in case it was missed. Hi, Julie, you're not late. Hi, Sherry and Kathy. Nice to see you here. Some people said this looked like a wave and others can see, you know, I see a mountain with the like looming sort of storm clouds on the top and a lake with reflections and this is like my very first landscape. I've never done anything like it before. So it was definitely a challenge, and um, this one is available. Uh, actually, it's in my shop right now, heathermaderart.com, so if you want to check it out, it's pretty inexpensive. I love this piece, though. I love how the smooth quality of the sky is just very serene, and, you know, all the reflections. I try to put the reflections of the mountains in the water. Yeah, this is a pretty one. I've never done anything like it, so it was fun. And, um, hi Brenda. I'm so glad you guys are here. I don't know why, I just, I just have this fear that no one will come when I'm doing my alcohol inks, but So be it if that is the way it is. I have to do this for some reason. It's in my soul right now, y'all. Speaking of soul, I was working on this one. Um, thank you, Selena. I appreciate it. Um, the supplies list of what's needed for the class, that's a great um, a great point. Oh, I'm talking, I, I'm sorry, I, my, my mind is all over the place. I've had I feel like I've just had so much to think about, like I'm finally decompressing from trying to put out those courses. So I put out the alcohol ink courses. Um, there's a way that you can win a class. It's in the description box. Um, but basically what you're going to do is want you want to comment on the promo video, which is the video um, 
posted right before this on my channel and um, just comment in that section and then next week I'll do a live comment picker of all the comments you can comment as many times as you want you can comment 20 times if you want um, each comment will act as um, an entry and then I'll do a live comment picker live next Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, West Coast time and we'll choose the winner there so uh, that's how that's gonna work and I can't wait to give that class away to somebody and um, so that's the that's the giveaway it, it you know you can do it whenever you want you have a week you can do it right now you can come back you can do it uh, after we're done here whatever you want to do but it's a, a good promo video to watch anyway um, Oh, Cynthia, there's two other pouring artists having lives right now. Yeah. I've started doing my lives at five for a while, um, a while ago, but you know, it's impossible to pick perfect times for everybody to do it separately. I just don't think, you know, we all have busy lives. So, um, this piece, I was listening to some gospel and you know, those of you who know me, I'm not a, a religious person necessarily, but I do love all kinds of music, and if you haven't heard Dorinda Clark Cole, you gotta check her out. She's ridiculous. She's so spiritual and beautiful and and, and moving, and this is what came out of that piece. And um, I'm probably gonna embellish it. So, but, yeah, it has a kind of mysterious quality, doesn't it, Selena? So... Hey, Cynthia, who has, um, who else is doing lives right now? You know, I don't have to do them on Friday. It's just helpful to me to do them on Friday. Um, I've been working so much that it's helpful to me. Okay. So this substrate we're going to work on, carry my, I burned my hand in the oven, but see how nicely it's healing. <laughs> um, Massey and Tish. Oh yeah, Tish always Tish and I always had a little overlap. And Massey Art Studio, yeah. I haven't well, because I'm always here, I never get to check it out. I guess I could go back later and, and, and check that out. But um okay, I want to talk about the substrate that we're gonna be using. Graphics paper, graphics craft plastic, I believe they call it. This is the opaque white, this is 12 by 12, and this is the opaque black. And for my other alcohol inks that you've seen me do, I'm working a lot on the white. Um, the ghost flowers that I do, I work on the black. I love this stuff because for the most part, it wipes clean. Now, it doesn't totally wipe clean if you're doing just all white, so it is definitely a challenge. I want to show you guys, I, I do have, um, you know, everything I do is not perfect. Look at the graininess I got in this white. It doesn't always work out. <laughs> um, these are just some practice textures. I usually just grab a piece and I start just kind of playing around with the inks, figuring out what they will do, what um, effects I can get. This right here I find extremely intriguing and I was thinking about doing a combination of a white and a pinata brass flower because I just love that shine that's coming off of there. I just think that is so, so pretty. Um, so I, I don't know, I was thinking about play, playing around with that today. I was trying to see what happens when you layer certain inks over the white along with metals. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's good to have just like a spare canvas, a little tester canvas. It's good to have something around to just play around with now. So I'm going to, high Rocket Sauce, um, I'm going to put that away. I want to I have to put my mask on here you guys in a second I think you'll still be able to hear me let's see that's the plan whoops sorry if you're getting a loud noise right now the plan is that you'll still be able to hear me that's my hope um if you can't 
my apologies. And, oh gosh, this is stuck right now. Oh no. Ugh. What in the world? Sorry. Hold on, I gotta try to get this clip off of here. Okay. So I think I'm gonna be able to put it on my lapel and you guys will be able to hear me just fine. We shall see. If for some reason it doesn't work, you'll let me know, I'm sure. Um, my respirator mask is the only thing keeping me able to paint right now. So uh, with these alcohol inks, and I do recommend the two wear one. So, yeah, Carrie, you said you were having trouble with um, hearing me as it was, but I don't understand because no one else had any trouble. And when I went back and listened to the live, I was very loud. Um, I thought I was very, very loud last on the last live. So you might just need to turn up your volume. That's me too, Amy. I don't think a painting can have too much shimmer either. Okay, I'm going to turn on my mask now. It makes that terrible noise upon starting. Oh, you know what I also found? Don't wear a bun when you wear this mask because <laughs> I, pl I, I literally plugged the air hole and I was like suffocating the other day because, ouch, I gotta literally take my hair out to do this. I'm gonna wear my hair back in a bun all the time. But, um, <laughs> yeah, because that's what happens is when you, the bun just went into the air hose tube and then, like, I was completely unable to breathe. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay. How was that? Yeah, Carrie, I'm so sorry if you can't hear me. Um, I have my volume up all the way. I'm not doing anything differently than I ever normally was. And when I played it back, it was fine. So there must be an issue with your phone. You know, I got my phone wet and that destroyed the sound on my phone. Um, it wasn't even actually wet. It was just damp. Can you guys hear me fine now? But I do have my mask on completely. Do you need me to turn up or to put the, put it closer or, okay. It sounds like most of you can hear me just fine. Okay, so the flowers, the first thing I'm going to do here is, um, thank you, Monica. Thanks, you guys and Sherry. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is, um, I always lay down a little bit of black, and this is the pitch black. I might bring you guys in a little bit closer. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. Don't want any weird colors. Okay. So the first thing I do is I just lay down some of this pitch black and I decide where the flower wants to go. Like in this case, maybe we'll, I've never done one where the flowers are like, you know, long and thinking about doing something like that so Let's see.
So sometimes I'll just lay down a little dot of this um, black and then I use my airbrush. Other times, I'll show you both ways. You can also just start with um, literally just with the white. So see how the, um, I just dry it. And that kind of helps me determine the shape of the flower. So I'm going to actually twist this around and that'll be the top and the flower is going to come down like this. And um, I'm going to start with, this is Blanco Blanco in this little thing. So if you guys are curious, that's what this is. And I just put it in these needle nose bottles because I feel like it will, um, it just has a better control. It seems like I have a better control. Now wait a minute, let me think about this Heather. Yeah, I want to do it that way. Okay. The ink kind of tells you what it wants to do and how it wants to go. I find this medium even more challenging than painting, except for you can control the colors, which I feel like you do have a lot more control over the colors, and I do like that for sure. Now, one thing I will say, Kathleen with Cost Creations in the house, you guys, uh, one thing, Kathleen is having an auction tomorrow night, you guys, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, I believe it is. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that's when it is, and um, you got to go check out her auction. Hi, Paula. How's my girl today? So see how pretty this black bleeds into the white a little bit. You get those little color effects. So I'm going to probably do this. Maybe one right here. Let's see. Going down. So I'll put a little drop. of the black right there to, to mark that. So like I said, I kind of let the flower determine what it wants to do and it definitely wants to go this way. So um, I'm gonna follow that lead. Now, one of the tricks of these flowers is don't overwork it the first time, especially like when you first put on your first layer of ink or any time really, don't overwork it because if you do, it starts to, um, it doesn't have that crazy, beautiful, ethereal, translucent look to it. Um, so, hi Carmen, alright, so now we have these two, I'm going to put one right here, going this direction, and again, I'll put a little dot of the black, I'm going to put this one up kind of high.
Good night, Paula. Thank you for joining and popping in and saying hello. I do appreciate the support. Thank you so much. All right, now I'm looking at the composition of this. This flower is gonna, I want it to go this way a little bit, and then I'm gonna probably put another one, two more. So this is like the first layer. Um, Okay, now you see I just made a lot of spatters. If I catch this really quick, I'm gonna try. If I can catch this really quick, a lot of those will wipe off with the a graphic plastic and that is why I love this substrate right here. Now, I don't mind these ones up here so much by the flower, those are kind of pretty. Um, it makes it look expressive. Um, my white is not mixed with alcohol. I've been using the Blanco Blanco just straight. If you have a tight area like this, you can always use a Q-tip as well. Um, no, I don't mix it with alcohol. Sometimes I do. Like, it depends on the transparency and also the amount of control you want to have over it because I feel like this is prettier but it's, <laughs> it's like if you make a mistake or if you make something you don't like it's really hard to wipe off so i'm trying to be a little confident right here and just use this straight out the bottle um so now we have like our three of starting of our three little flowers here i'm gonna put a couple more so we have five uh, in the foreground here maybe a bigger one down here. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of artists who do their paper um, with alcohol first. They prime their paper with alcohol. I do definitely do it if I'm using a tile. I haven't found the need to do it when I'm using this graphics paper. Um, it just doesn't seem necessary, so I just haven't done it. <laughs> the compressor I use, um, if you guys look in my Amazon shop, I have links to the compressor and airbrush that I recommend. And that can help you kind of understand the one that I'm using, the one that I'm using is, I think this is a master airbrush, but I got it from a cake decorator who was retiring off and I got it used. Um, so, you know, you can always check those little, you know, online ads if you don't have the money to buy one new, but I've also seen people doing this with, um, those little makeup airbrush kits that are like 79 bucks, 59 bucks, they're really cheap, so it might be something you can think about. One thing is, I'd like to get good enough where I can really, um, I have to work the opposite. So if I want these flowers to face this way, I actually have to turn the paper the other direction. And I hate that. Um, it's something that I'm, I'm going to keep practicing at. Lori, I'm so glad that you're doing better. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. So if you guys want to win, um, my, uh, if you just are joining me, Cheryl can explain, but I'm going to be giving away one of my classes, um, my alcohol ink classes, and I'd love to share that with, with a lucky winner. 
basically all you have to do is comment on the promo video, which is the video right before this one on my YouTube channel. And if you do that, every single comment counts as an entry. And next week on my live, I will go and do a live comment picker. So here we do, we have five here. These are kind of beautiful little ghostly little flowers. Now, you know, you can stop right here, but as I showed you in the earlier ones, I like a lot of detail in mine. So I'm gonna add another color here too. Um, already my mind is doing this thing. <laughs> I can see where I want the vine, these I can see these vines. I don't know, does this happen to you with art, you guys? I'll be in the middle of an art project and I can see the end result already. And um, not totally, but like right here, I can see how I want the vines to be coming from and where I want them to go. These would also be beautiful little um, like sea creatures, octopus or something like that, you know? So I can use basically any color. Um, I just did blue, not too long, but just the last ones I did that I showed you, I did blue. Um, one thing is I'm not gonna put pearls on until I do at least one other color. So I'm gonna show you one of the tricks of the trade right here. So pay attention if you want to see how I get some of the detail, um, the, the depth. I take a little drop of alcohol on this black part. We'll start with our first flower. And I'm actually going to bring you closer just for one second. So hopefully you can really see. Okay, so I'm going to put a drop on here, and then I just let it set for a second, and then I spray it out. Now, at first, you're like, oh, that just turned our beautiful white brown, you know, it brought out some of those other colors, but what it actually does is it creates depth because we're going to put more, I put more colors and more white over it. So drawing this black in here just creates a lot of depth and interest. And also realism, like you know I'm not going for totally realistic because I'm not a realistic painter, but it does help um, because the, you know in nature things are usually not perfectly one color. And the cool part about this is if you didn't want to use black for these dots, you could use whatever you want. You could use um, slate, like a slate color, a gray, just pretty much anything that's going to add some um, interest here. Um, uh, there's an error message on my Amazon shop. That's so sad. Well, you know, you can try another video. I think, um, Cheryl, did you, I think you copied it from my Amazon and those aren't the complete links. So, it's Cheryl, the link is exactly how you have it, but Heather made her art instead of dot, dot, dot. Yeah, yeah, like Cheryl's saying, go ahead and use the description box for that and that should be helpful for you. It's just the same exact link, just with, I see that instead of dot, 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 it should just be completed Heather Mater art. So you don't, it's not, it's right now it's Heather M.A. <laughs> 
You know what I find funny? No one ever gets it, but Heather made her art. Like, Heather made her art. <laughs> Does anyone ever, no one ever says anything about that. Anyway, um, Sherry, you can also go in another one of my videos and click on the description box if that's helpful. Okay, so I should add some color to this, and <clears throat> I'm really wanting, I'm really thinking about that brass. Uh, remember I showed you on this, for those of you who are just joining, I could do blue. I just already did some of these with blue. Let me see if I can... So, I'm bringing you out again. Um, I already did some of these in blue, but I've been thinking about this, like I said, this super pretty brass color and this color right here. So this color is a Tim Holtz mixative. And I've been thinking about that. I did one in those and I haven't been able to reproduce it before again. So it would be kind of cool if just by beginner's luck or whatever, or luck of the draw, that I was able to actually reproduce that again. So let me see if I can find that color real quick, if you don't mind just hanging out with me for a minute. Um, I know it's one of these mixative colors and gold, it's not gold, silver. What is that one? Did I use it already? Let me look. No. Here's a copper one that I would like to try and see what that looks like. Oh, rose gold, um, smolder, these are all of the mixative colors. I used the, oh, caramel would be a nice one to try, um, butterscotch, these are all kind of some that I find fascinating here. This is the regular gold and silver, which I know, I'm pretty sure I don't want. Here's rust. I'm just curious as to how some of these will work. <clears throat> well, Carmen, Cheryl is saying yes, and I unequivocally feel that you do. I just was watching some other YouTubers today who work with alcohol inks, I know like uh, Miriam, Miriam's Nature, she doesn't and she's just fine. There's a lot of people that do it and they're just fine. I am very sensitive, like very sensitive. Oh, the Haven tribe's on their way. Awesome. Hi, Monica. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kristen. We're just doing some little flowers today. Hi Angie and Doris and Virginia. So nice to see you guys today. I was just gonna try out some of these um, colors, maybe the rose gold and some caramel and some rust. I think that sounds, now you don't have to shake the caramel color, but this one, hi Deb. Oh. You really do have to shake this until you get the ball rolling down here, so forgive me for a second. Do you hear it now? It's starting to... Aw, uh, thank you so much! You guys, if you're liking today and want to keep seeing some of these videos, you can do like Angie did and support the, the uh, channel. And then I'm going to mix the copper really quick because I don't think I've ever seen the copper. Hi, Julie. 
Jim, so today we are doing, oh, forgive me. This is, I don't know if this has ever been mixed before. I'm really trying to get the, that ball at the bottom of this going. Sorry for all the mixing on boring cause creations. <laughs> Bye, Kathleen. Oh my gosh, I can't get it. So this is one of the downsides, these mixatives. You really need to get that stuff at the bottom because that layer down there is the pearl layer. If you don't get it, you're not going to get very strong results. But sometimes shaking it seems like a monumental task. I don't know. We're going to see what happens. I'm going to put a little bit of this rust down. Now, I've never done this combination on black, so I think it will be very dramatic. Now, one thing is I'm going to add a little drop of alcohol. Now, see the difference? Um, when you add the alcohol, you get a much more spread out line than if you're just using one drop straight from the bottle and I'll show you the, the difference. So when I just add one drop straight from the bottle, I get kind of these, um, those spiky look like this. And if I want more of a blended look, I have to put a drop of alcohol with it or right behind it. Now at first, like, I don't know, this is maybe not my favorite. I'm putting this rust on here. Just This was just a trial. But one thing I do notice about these flowers is they have an ugly phase, kind of like a teenager <laughs> goes through. Didn't we all do that? We all went through that little phase where we were like super not cute. I did, I don't know. I had braces. My hair was, it was the 90s curl, um, the perm, 90s perm. I was just really uncomfortable in my body, I think, and <laughs> these flowers kind of do that too. They go through this little phase where they're just kind of ugly, um, and then sometimes they don't recover, but if you... Keep your imagination open when you're doing this because just know it can still be beautiful and still get better. So this this rust is maybe not my favorite color. Um, I'm not too disappointed. Oh, Doris, did you watch the whole video? Did you like the... There was a lot of videos. You watched all of it today. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your support. Hi, Clara. All right, this is a little butterscotch because I think we need to brighten this up a bit. And it does help. It's, I've never used that um, rust color on black before, so... Now, these, this gold and this butterscotch color, it's going to really play up the metallics once I get the metallics going on this. Now, it seems like, why did we cover up all the white when that's you know, we spent all that time building it up, but the layers on here are part of what makes, I think, these flowers so pretty. All the different layers. So, all right, so now, again, ugly phase. I'm gonna put more black, um, and then I'm gonna start adding some 
and some well let's do a little bit of blanco or uh let's do some snow cap mixative hi sue clara lawrence has an awesome channel you guys if you haven't seen clara's channel um i've been watching her for inspiration on how to use these alcohol inks All right, now I'm adding a little bit. This is snow cap I'm using, but I actually need a little bit of um, ink. I mean, uh, alcohol. Now, the thing about the snow cap I find, and maybe someone else can elucidate, but it is not the easiest um, thing to work with. It like, it seems like it. It can get granular really easy um, if you overwork it, but it's also one of the brightest most uh beautiful white pigments too although i've been trying trex inks and i really enjoy them as well um i've had some pretty cool results with those as well now see how that snow cap just added some highlights to these flowers so you know it's like we're layering we took some away with the dark now we're adding some back in with the light. And that's what gives the, that tissue paper quality to these flowers is all of these different layers. Now, having said that, if you start putting too many layers, I notice you get um, a weird film and you start getting kind of like a sticky residue and a little film that I find unappealing on the final painting so i stop at a certain point when i feel like you know we've reached some kind of all right so those three have the highlights and those don't i don't know if the camera is really picking up the difference in the quality but i can certainly see it here in the room and you can just use the white to shape it a little bit You guys don't forget um, to comment and on that video if you're wanting to win one of my new art classes. Um, that was a goal I set for myself last year that at the beginning of this new year I would put out some actual uh, online tutorials and it was a labor of love. It was intense. <laughs> it was incredible I, I thought it would just be as easy as you know putting out videos on youtube and it was harder um at least the first time hi tish you guys if you haven't checked out tish at the artist haven you need to do that although a lot of the people here are here from tish's tribe i kind of feel like i'm part of tish's tribe too Okay, so now we have all these. Um, let's add one of let's add this brass and see what we can get with it. First, I'm gonna add more black. It's something I wanted to do earlier. Now, here's another little trick. I don't just add a drop. <clears throat> I kind of go into the parts of the flower that have a natural indentation and I put a little black there. So what that does is create like a natural illusion of depth. And now we're just kind of creating that little top there on the flower. Right before your very eyes, it's happening everybody. I'm so excited to do this today, like I swear. I was waiting all day. <laughs> I'm waiting all day for this. Carrie, I'm sorry. I know that must be frustrating. And 
I love having you here, so I'm sorry to see you go. Onion rings and cheeseburger. I want that. I really, really, really do. I swear. Okay, I'm going to do my little depth drop here again. But I don't want to do too much on this one because we don't want to cover up all of those highlights that we just created. Okay. I'm going to bring you in close so hopefully you can see some of the depth that's going on in these flowers. Can you see? All right, now wait until we put this grass down. So I'm kind of excited to see what that is going to do. This is pinata grass. Now you definitely have to be kind of decisive. The metallics dry quicker. I want to get some of this grass on the black too. That is definitely a goal because it's just so pretty against the black there. And if you overwork this one, uh, this grass, it will crack and break apart. Um, you have to use a little bit of confidence with it. The brass is a little bit thicker. Um, it's like these other mixatives. These mixatives have a layer, you can even see it right at the bottom here. Um, and that is literally the, the pearl part. Oh, sorry, this is the mixative. There's just a layer right there. And that's why, you know, it does end up being a little bit thicker. Um, it's not as thick as the white. But look. Let's see if I can get some of this shine to pop out. Oh, it's so hard. So it's so hard to show on this camera. I'm really trying to show. It's really pretty, but the camera is not picking it up as light as much as I would hope. I find that doing um, a line instead of a drop kind of helps me guide out where it's going to go. So I kind of like doing a line of ink, which is why I like these little bottles. Oh my gosh, this is so fancy. Okay, I don't want to obscure all of the colors that we have created. Can I show what it looks like with the white on top of the brass and the other metallics? I'm not sure what you mean. Can I show what the white looks like on top? Um, I think I had a, I didn't have any, I was trying to think, I did this little, just practice. See, this is the brass just on the plain black. It's really, really pretty. It has quite a shimmer to it. I don't, 
think I have any. Like, you know, I can add, actually right here, I'm going to, I will add a little bit more, uh, probably of the, we need to add one more color here to bring this out. Oh, can I layer some white? Um, I don't know, I have two layers of white right here already. And I think that so you can see how this is almost to the point where you don't want to put any more on here. I'll do it on a little practice, on that practice piece of paper. Now, this to me is so pretty. So where it catches the light to me is not the same as where it catches the light for the camera. Um, no, it's not you, Poe, and honestly, I have to tell you, I really like the graphics and the Nara paper way more than you, Poe. Um, the reason is because you can wipe off your mistakes. <laughs> Everybody wants to be able to do that, right? But I, I just find with you, Poe, it just leaves... A ghost image and um, for the most part with the graphics it doesn't and so there's a few different blacks I'll use I will use the um, this is the craft plastic the black craft plastic and the Nara makes the black and then there's another one called Paycon P is in Paul a C O N and that is a really cheap substrate and it works pretty well as well. So now what we have here is just layers and layers of colors and flowers. And so, hold on a second, I'm gonna grab something if you just bear with me for a minute. Okay, so for the most part, <clears throat> I'm pretty much done with my mask now on this uh, painting, so you can probably hear me. Someone should text Carrie easily and tell her I'm done with my, send her a message on Messenger on Facebook and tell her Vandana or someone that I'm done with using my mask if she wants to come back. Cause she's my buddy and I know it's frustrating that sound but it just is what it is anyway um why why I have this I don't know these flowers so these flowers that I did last week this is the same this is the same this is the same uh, technique and everything and I used pearl in here in like three different colors of blue. Um, but all of the, this part and all of the beautiful details you see here 
all of those were created, all the delicate lines running through here, like butterfly wings. See those beautiful lines? All of that was done with a detail brush. And also, um, I use these little tools, these little dotting tools. I think they're for people who do uh, mandelas and stuff. Um, so I just start, <laughs> I just take it like this and I just start going in and working through the details. Now, um, I love these little paint brush. This is the Deco Fine Detail Art Brushes. Um, these are some of my favorite brushes. And some of the brushes that are in here are not the ones by Deco. I just stuck them in here for good measure or whatever, but I'll just grab like a little fine one and I usually grab like one that's about like that, if you can see. And a little bit of alcohol <clears throat> in a little cup. And I have a little pink palette here. And then I start working through the details. Now, one thing, Cheryl, you asked about the white over the top of metallic. I could do that really quick for you just to show you. Here's an example of some metallics. These two over here are metallics. And if I put some of this white over the top of it, this would be the snow cap. I'll just blow that real quick. It's very opaque. The snow cap is very, very opaque. That's why I use it, but I don't, you know, I use it for details. Now the um, Blanco Blanco is less opaque. You can see. It's more translucent, but it's, you can see some of it over the top, but it does definitely take away some of the, um, the shimmer of the metallic, which is why I tend to put the metallics on towards the end. And then if I still want some of those white highlights or to brighten something up, I'll, I'll use my brush to do it. I love the grip with those brushes too because my hands are old and tired and I've been a chef for almost 20 years and before that I used to work in an office for <laughs> 12 years and so and now I'm a painter so I find that my hands are definitely appreciate the um, dilute the Blanco. Um, yeah, I do dilute it and I have different projects where I've done that. For this project, I just was sticking with what I know. Um, I've diluted it. The other one I really like is, have you tried, Clara, Have you or anyone, have you guys tried the Trex White? It's really, really sheer. It's very sheer. Um, comparatively. In fact, I could just do a little example real quick right here. I don't want to blow too much ink without my mask on, but <clears throat> just as a, just to show you the difference real quick. It's very dilute. And look, very, 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 very sheer. Almost to the point where you can't even see that. I'm almost 50. <laughs> Not quite 50, but I'm getting there. I'm, I'm rounding the corner to 50. I'm 47, so my mom is in the house. If anybody wants to say hello to her. Hi, mom. Hi. Where is it? Who said Aunt Pat? Oh, well, Uncle Pat. <laughs> Definitely not Aunt Pat. We'll just say Uncle Pat. Um, I, 
I'm going to put a few drops of alcohol in this and then I'm going to show you when, how I start doing some of these fine details. And then also I'll, I'll, do, I'll show you the dotting tool. Let me bring you in a little closer. I hope that the quality is still good when you're close up. I have a new overhead um, system, um, video system that's coming up. So I'm excited to share with you an updated version. I've been using the same video uh, overhead system for quite two years now. And I think this one is going to be better. I'm going to have a lot more control over it. And I'll be able to do some bigger works. I have some 24 or 18 by 24 paper and I'm really excited at the process, the thought of doing one of those big flowers. And this is what I do. I follow the line of the, the natural line of the flower, just like if I was using the pens. Um, and I just use this little brush and make these little tendrils coming out of the flower. I find them where I feel like the natural highlight would be. And just a little bit of plain alcohol in this. And then I just follow the direction where I feel like these little natural highlights might occur in the flower if there was a pe one petal over another. And that's what you do. You just start. Like Gerda Lipsky, I don't know if you guys watch her. She's um, one of my favorite and most inspirational artists of all time. And she said this is what she does when she works out the details. So um, she's working it out, and that's how I feel I'm doing in this in these little moments. I'm just basically working out all the little details of the flower, and it takes time. Yours don't have to be this detailed if you want to just start. Um, you know, you could leave them just like this. You could make them much simpler. I'm a Virgo, and I think that makes me look at details strongly <laughs> so yeah okay so let me show you with the dotting tool so you have an idea of how I kind of work out some of those flowers I'm going to use this dotting tool and show you how I start working into the um what's that called this little thing stamen or something hi Joanne thank you so much for your support Joanne and it's so nice to see you here um this is the large side, and this is the small side. And I usually just kind of alternate between the two, and I dunk it in this snowcap mixative, and I just start creating some of the random patterns here. Now, these fade a little bit if you are putting them on the black ink, they start to change colors because the black, the pitch black is not just black. It has a bunch of different secondary colors in there. Um, if you use the pinata black, I notice it's the mantilla black or whatever, this one, it's actually more pure black. It's black, black. But I just start adding these little details and if I feel like it's getting too crazy or too messy um, or too unrealistic or something then I will just add a little bit of black back in and cover it back up a little bit so like for this I'll just put a little black in this palette a drop or two and and then I'll just go back in with some and then it just adds like a depth to this part takes a while, but I also enjoy it. It's incredibly meditative. And one of the things I really like about the alcohol inks is <clears throat> I was kind of saying this to Cheryl. I, I'm very busy these days and I love 
pouring paint, don't get me wrong, and I always will, and I still will do that on my channel, you guys. Don't feel like I'm giving this up forever. In fact, what I want to do, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here, but I digress. What I really want to do is I want to figure out how to incorporate my balloon rolls with my flowers. <laughs> and that's kind of one of my next little projects, is to figure that out. I'm gonna work on this other flower, like maybe we'll just work on this flower up here for a minute just to give you a different perspective. And I'm gonna start with the white again. Just start adding my little dots. I tend to put the big ones towards the top and then the smaller ones going down. I was telling a story about something but I actually forgot. I feel like my my brain is, has been overloaded. <clears throat> Yes, Cheryl, balloon rolls with AI. I've done it before, um, just not to the level of what I'm imagining in my mind. Before, I have done some balloon rolls, on, or I mean some um, AI over canvases, and you can see some of those paintings in my videos. Uh, in the, my, I have an AI playlist, an alcohol ink playlist, and you can really see some of those there. Each flower is so unique and different. That's one thing that's fascinating. It doesn't really matter. I can do this same technique over and over and over, just like fluid art in general is so fascinating to me for that reason. Christina, thank you so much. Is muscadine wine the new color that you're working on right now, uh, packaging? Christina has her own line of paints, in case anyone doesn't know, called the Porage Posse. I finally figured out how to actually pronounce that because I was trying to make it much less cool than it, uh, that it was. It's Porage. <laughs> Porage, so. Oh, the dark red. Oh, that's my favorite. I love that dark red. I made a beautiful painting that I sold at my last auction. I'm gonna have an auction coming up in April, uh, April March or April, and it's gonna feature all alcohol ink uh, paintings with no other types of paintings. So. Kind of excited to see how that goes. Now, this one to me just like looks a little dotty, like I don't know how to describe it. It just looks a little, um, I really wish I could bring you down a little bit more. Let's just see if I do this. You guys just forgive me for one second while you'll see a little bit of motion happening. I'm trying to see if I can bring this whole bar down a little bit more. I use an overhead bar and so the problem with that is it's quite stationary. Oh my gosh, that's so much better because you're so much closer to the actual project.
I'm knocking everything over here. This is the Beauty of Life show, and I used to stress about this kind of stuff, but the truth is, it's just me. I don't have a crew. I'm not on television. <laughs> I'm just doing the best I can. And I really want you guys to get to see these details because I feel like that's part of the beauty of what we're experiencing here together. If I could really get some of the, the shimmering gold to show up, that would make me really happy, but it's just not happening. I don't know why. Cheryl and I are going to moderate Cause Creation. Uh, we're one of the moderators in Cause Creation's auction tomorrow night. So if you didn't hear about it earlier, you should definitely check it out. Okay, so, whoops, I just dropped some alcohol in there. So, and here's another thing I'm going to show you. If you don't like what you've done, let's say I, I think this is too much, like to me. I think I'm like, uh... All you have to do, folks, is just take a drop of alcohol, just one, kind of wash it away, and now it's definitely all subdued, and I could, you know, now if you keep doing that, you're going to eventually feather out, like, the details. I could definitely use, um some more detail right there but thank you Sarah thank you <clears throat> okay so back to the other way too is it just add some alcohol so because wherever you put alcohol it's gonna slight whoops not a big drop of it hopefully um, but wherever you put the alcohol, it's going to lighten it up a little bit. So if there's part of this flower, you're like, eh, that's not my favorite. It didn't turn out exactly how I had hoped. But see how that created that little highlight right there? By just putting that drop, that's another way to create the depth. So let me show you really quickly. This is a good little example right here. So let's say I want this one to look more round. One of the things is when you look at round objects, they're lighter in the center and then they kind of, a lot of times they go darker and that, it's an illusion basically. Um, Evie, thank you for coming so much. I appreciate you and I appreciate your support. But let me show you, if I just put a drop, let's say, of alcohol, specifically in the center and just let it rest for a second in there darn it i'm all over the place right here i just dropped some right there too it's totally fixable and but anyway if i do that and then i just really blow it out i might have to do it a couple times but this is one of my little secrets for creating the illusion of the round, the rounded center is by putting some alcohol and just thinning it out. I did this a lot on this one. Night Sue, thank you so much for coming. Um, on this one, especially, you can see, look at, I. Each one of those light blue is really just a drop of alcohol that I let set on there. So, Lori, I'm so glad you enjoyed this and thank you so much. So anyway, I could just keep doing that or you can use it with a brush. I'm not, um, still haven't quite gotten the hang of doing, using a brush. See, I feel like I don't have as much control necessarily. But yeah, if you
you guys like what you see, please can, uh, continue to support the channel. You can share it. That would be awesome. Share, uh, share my classes. That would be very, very awesome if I could get some people to share um, the link to my classes. You know. So then I just work it out. I'm just finding like all the little highlights on here. Christina, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, we all have to support each other the best we can. And I appreciate all of you showing up here tonight. Especially when there's other all the other places you could be, right? Let's face it. Aw, Tish, a cup of coffee! Tish, that's my new price of my new cup of coffee. <laughs> so I, did, I was addicted to these cups that these, um, oh my god, I hate to even admit it, it's so disgusting, but um, they have this thing called a cloud at Starbucks, a caramel cloud macchiato. Not the regular one but this one was like almost like it had like an orange julius pop to it with the serious amount of this cloud cloudy cloud powder on the top and i was like totally in love with those but they were expensive like 485 i can't afford that all the time so anyway luckily they just stopped making them and now I switched to a Campana, which is just two shots of espresso and a little dollop of whipped cream on the top. No sugar or anything else in there. And they're only two, they're like 265. <laughs> That's so, it's awesome. So this is all I do, you guys. And I'll just keep doing it for hours in hours. Sarah, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Clara. Aw. My heart is melting. My heart is melting. I really look, I see so much um, love and support for my flowers and my alcoholic stuff. And um, I really appreciate it all, you guys, because that's, that's where my heart is going right now. And I have to do it. So look at this one. This is how it goes. It just keeps going and going and going and going. See? Look at how pretty. How can I not love that? And then, like this one, you can see I did a lot of wispy, um, looks right here and that helps me kind of like bring some of the highlight and depth into it and if you really don't like something you did like you can always just put some alcohol on your brush and just keep going now now that we've done this so this flower since we're working now I, I, i'll keep going and going and going like literally it'll take me a long time bandana thank you so much I appreciate it and thank you Kristen so um, now that I've kind of shown you I've shown you how to do the tops and the little beautiful oh my gosh okay an accident has occurred ah here we go this is the worst part about alcohol ink I'm gonna show you <laughs> don't stress don't stress out about it. Grab your airbrush and pretend like it all happened for a reason. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> I 
just totally spilled a whole cup of alcohol in there. And let me get a paper towel. So I'll probably have to fix this flower now. And but this is like a good teaching point. Um I'm gonna fix this flower right before your eyes. Hopefully it won't it'll just take a second and I won't really have to blow much alcohol, but it's not really the alcohol that bothers me so much, it's the actual alcohol inks. There that's what really gets me. Okay. So let's, let's, I'm going to show you. So this kind of lost some of its definition because I just spilled all that, a whole cup of ink on it. So let's, real quick, I'm just going to pop this on real quick. So there's that, you can see, now we'll just add a little bit, we'll add a little bit of the white, and now you're really going to see what happens when we put white over metallics. I chose Blanco Blanco because it'll be less invasive, I guess. Now see, I hesitated for just a moment, and now that white spot won't come off, so it's left a ghost image. And this is the thing I had told you about earlier. If you catch it really super quickly, it's not too hard. All right, look, we almost completely fixed that flower and the, the last thing will be one little bit of this grass to kind of give it some of that sparkle again where we put the white on there. And voila. That's pretty much all she wrote. So now any, I, I might have to go through and do the detail again. I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to definitely go through and probably add some black right here and fix the, fix this part of it because it, you know, it's lost some of its definition, but I'm not going to have to, like, the whole piece isn't ruins. Another cool part about alcohol inks is, let me find the black right here. Yeah, we're so lucky. Um, so look, I can literally just go in. Now, that, this brings me to the point that I was going to make earlier which is after I've done all of this white part and all the, um, the stamen or whatever this thing is called, the piston, I don't know what it's called, the piston or whatever. So we'll, we'll go back to this flower down here so you can see. After I've done that, then I go in with my black and I dilute it a tiny little bit usually with a little touch, just one drop of alcohol. And I just go in, maybe two drops, because that was a little dry. 
That's another reason why I like those needle nose bottles is they don't spill like that. Um, yeah, I can't use these at all. I have to really use a mask. I, I really can't use them without one. Okay, now, because the paper is black and we have all these layers, this little bit of black that I'm adding is so integral to that depth. Look. It basically adds that I, I find the deep, dark parts of the flower and I accentuate them. That's all I'm doing here. So find the parts that are the shadow anyway. Because we've already highlighted the parts that we thought where one petal would overlap the other. And now we're going through and we're finding the parts where there would be shadow. And we're just going to bring that out. Um, I do have a mask in my Amazon shop. Um, and I will update if... There's definitely one in my Amazon shop. If you're just not seeing it now. Um, I have a few different kinds of masks. That's one thing with the videos that I just put out, you guys. I just put out yesterday all my new online tutorial videos. You can, I do a, a whole review of, of the masks and wh which mask I like better and why I use some versus the other. Um, the one I'm using is definitely the most comfortable for me and I can use it long term. I can sit here for hours and do this without any smell, any discomfort. Now, the next thing I'm going to be reviewing is air purifiers, so you can stay tuned to my channel for that because I have like three different air purifiers now and I've really got to see how they all work and which one I like the best, which one removes the fumes. Um, and like I said, some of these people just work with this and they work with resin without any problems. I just can't. I'm not one of those people. so. Yes, Christine, yes, I can. I absolutely can send you a link. Um, it depends on what kind of mask you want. If you want one that blows air, like this one, then that's, that's the one that I recommend. But um, I also have a full face mask that I recommend. It's just not, it looks like this, let me show you. This is a full face mask and I definitely recommend this as well. It's just um, not quite as comfortable in the long term as the one that I'm using. The black I'm using is alcohol ink, yes. Um, but in some of my flowers I will use acrylics. Now this is where I do the mixed media part. Hi Marcia. Um, and Kristen, the brush that I use, is, this is the brush that I strongly recommend is the Deco Fine Detail. Sorry, I'm trying to get this in the camera here. The Deco Fine Detail Art Brushes. You get 14 plus one brushes. They're really cheap. They're in my Amazon shop too. Um, it's a total steal for what you get. I love those. Um, but anyway, so this is how I get the depth on these flowers and I hope this has been informative. I've appreciated uh, making these beautiful art pieces for you. Please, if you want to win um, access to my class, please comment on the video before this one, uh, which is my promotion video for my new online classes. And you can win. You can win a lifetime access to my class. And it has like s basically eight videos in it, plus a few other little tips and tricks videos. And yeah, so I thank all of you for coming. 
I appreciate each and every one of you and your time. Um, happy to do it. And next week is when we'll announce the winner. Uh, I will publicly choose on the the live next week. I'll choose the winner of the class this week. So you have a whole week to do it, but you could do it now before you forget. And bye Christina and bye Kristen and Sarah and Anne and Marcia and Bandana and Cheryl and all Anne and all of you who were here. I really appreciate each and every one of you for coming, Shelly, and that's it. I'm going to say goodbye. Love you all. Let's take you down and see. There's the flower. It turned on. It turned out really pretty. Here's the one that we fixed, and it still looks pretty pretty. And here is the other one. Look at the shimmer on that. Get that gold going on in there. I love that gold coming out. I'll probably finish this up with some, um, probably some vines and stuff, you know. Sorry, my hand is shaking. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye.